Hey guys, how are you doing out there in Palmero Junk Pile Guitar subscriber land? I like to think that there's more and more of you out there. Um, we are still on this 1950 silver tone Econo arch top. I've described it as a student instrument because it has a very thin fingerboard, nothing uh, below it which means it came out of the factory with kind of a high action. This was a strummer. You are not going to be doing very, very many uh, concert performances with an orchestra with this thing. Now, if you've been around my channel enough, you know that when we start getting into the fifth and sixth episode on a guitar like this, there is not a lot of room to make money on one of these things because... If you start off paying $200 for something like this, you can tell we've put a lot of hours into it. We had a, a teeter-totter neck. It might have needed a neck reset. We discovered that the body was loose, so the block that holds the neck was pivoting. A um, lot of cracks, um, missing some kerfing. Um, everything we've done to this guitar is in a playlist up there, and I'll add this episode to it. Now, today, we're going to get into where things can get really, really expensive really, really fast, and that is the bridge. So, I put a string on here, and you can tell with a bridge on there that there is, the action's very high on this already which means we're going to have to work this bridge down. Now, I've got a handful of bridges. We're going to learn a lot about bridges, and I've even drawn up a graphic here that's going to kind of tell you some things about doing bridge work because here's the bottom line. A guitar with a high action is going to be sentenced to a slide player um, and... To cut right to the chase, putting a lot of money into a guitar like this isn't going to work out. If you're picking them up and you're getting them for next to free, maybe there's a little room in there for you uh, by the time you're junk piling it up. But to get this thing back to what it was to begin with, even after you do that, it's not highly desirable. So we're going to talk about the ins and outs of bridges. Um, I've done a, some episodes up before that kind of explains some of this and I'll give you an episode up there you might see cigar box guitars you might see coffee can guitars hard telling what you'll see but we're going to take a close look at this one and see what we're going to have to do and I'm going to give you a couple of things to think about uh, before you start cutting into a Bakelite bridge or uh, when you're sanding and cutting on a bandsaw, how you can defeat what the grain is supposed to do, and a few things like that. And you're going to make a decision that when you start working on these things, take a look at the bridge amongst the neck and some other things. It'll kind of tell you how much room you got to work. So that said, let's get to the bench and look at these drawings in this box of bridges I got and see if we can figure out how to make this thing play again. Let's go. Okay, let's start by talking about where the bridge goes. Now, I've done an episode or two in the past about intonation, meaning how do the frets produce the sound or notes you want them to produce, and that's all a function of making sure that the bridge is in the right place, and that is measured between the end of, or the back side of the knot, the side looking at you, and finding the 12th fret, knowing what that distance is, and then measuring from the middle of the 12th fret and marking that point down here, because that will make sure that your bridge is in the correct place. So, I've got this fancy... Beverly Hills yardstick. Um, yeah, that if you have one of these, it makes it absolutely <laughs> meaning nothing, but hey, whatever. So I'm going to go to the back of the nut and measure and find the 12th 
fret and I'm going to put a mark right there. Now what I do is I take from the middle of the 12th fret and what do you know that mark is right there. You can see where the bridge has sat in the past. Um, it looks to me like it was a little bit too far back but um, so what we'll do is we'll take uh, a piece of tape you want to use the right kind of tape because you don't want to take the finish off this fine guitar that we put um, three dollars and seventy four cents into if you remember right also it helps to make sure that you're looking at the 12th fret and not the 14th. So I'm going to reach over here and grab the love pencil and I'm going to make a mark right there and then come over here and make a mark right there. There we go. So the middle of our bridge is going to line up here and here. Now when it comes time to tuning up the guitar, the difference in between the diameter of the biggest string and the smallest string make you compensate by rotating the bridge slightly. Some bridges have a compensation built into them, like this one. All right, look at this fancy artwork. There are different kinds of adjustable floating bridges. Um, they have a thumb screw uh, that has a threaded uh, post that goes down into the bottom part of the bridge. And then this part adjusts up and down. So, um, there are two types of configurations you typically see uh, in the base, or this part here, this, or this. This one's a little springy. And it kind of helps push the bridge down when the string tension comes over the top here. That opening does that. Um, let's take a look at this kind of bridge here, which has just a solid part here. And then the base of it looks like this when you start off. And then you have the one that looks like this. You with me? Now... If you were to say which one of these is most fragile or fragile, when you start taking a lot of wood off of here, this gets pretty shaky here versus this one here. Are you with me? So why am I take, talk about, talking about taking wood off of the bridge? Well, we saw this bridge was on the guitar. And it was too high. This is a new uh, bridge. It's never been worked. And you can see it is very, very high. Do you see that? If we have to take wood off of this one, this one would have a lot of work done. Now, let me show you a couple of things here that are kind of concerning. Again, this part is separate from this part. So, we know that we want to end up with the string height at the right level, uh, meaning the point between here and here. And if the thumb wheels are there, we want to make sure that this is actually down a little bit lower than where the strings come across or we'll start high. So we have some choices to make here if we're going to work this down. We don't want to mess with something that has a graduated top um, like this. We wouldn't want to take a wood off the top of that one, uh, nor this one. This one's curved a little bit, even though it's not graduated. We would want to take, let me leave these up here. We would want to take the, arch tops don't hold things well. We would want to take the wood off of the bottom of the top part of the bridge, this part here. So we start by remembering that 
there are cutouts in the bridge for the thumb wheels, the adjustment wheels, like this. So when we cut this down, and you want to remember, these things are slanted. They're not square. So if you go to cut, say, from here to here on a bandsaw, you have to compensate that this is going to try to spin back so it's not flat. So when you make your mark where you're going to cut it, say here, you want to remember that you're going to end up cutting a piece for the thumb wheel adjustment. So that means you would cut here, notch down, come over, notch, and cut here. You may end up cutting half of this away, which means that you have to make a notch here. So you got to think this out so you end up with the notch for the thumb wheel. If you don't have the notch for the thumb wheel, you're taking off wood down here uh, that you really don't need to. So let's say... I've got this marked off here, and this represents the wood that you would take out for the thumb wheel to fit in, i.e. that there. Now, the easiest way to do this is to take this to a bandsaw, cut this way, cut this way, cut this way, and cut this way. Here's the problem. I've drawn this arrow here. This represents the way the grain runs on one of these floating bridges. Now, it has to run that way because if it ran this way, when the strings put tension, it would want to split down. So, guess what? If you're not really careful when you cut these corners and you go over one on one of the planes, what ends up happening is when the bridge presses down, that overage right there or here or here or here will cause a stress against a grain line and this whole thing will fold up and crack right here. Let me show you a guitar that that's happened with. Okay, we're playing the, the stack a guitars game here. Um, <laughs> we're going to call this one an episode you're going to see the house paint harmony. It's got its own story, but you can tell right here that this guitar, to get the action down, someone has trimmed that bridge down a ton. There's not much break angle coming from the tailpiece, but it is literally collapsed right there. I don't know if you can see that. Let's move this a little bit closer. But the bottom has been matched to the top, and we're going to talk about how to do that here. But this has collapsed under the tension of the string, and guess what? It collapsed right where the notch was made on this side for the thumb wheel. So, moral of the story is if you start cutting into that corner too much, you are going to cause a grain split later. So here's the moral of the story. When you're going to cut down this top piece and you need to make that notch, don't go all the way to the corner here or here get fairly close and then you can take a very small round file and file this way and actually round that corner off instead of making it into a 90. You want to protect the grain both this way and this way. But again, if I cut this line and extend up to here and then bring this line and just go past that one a little bit, as soon as everything starts working against each other, you're going to have a split running this way. Now, these bridges are fairly economical if you buy them in the right places, but when you start cutting them up and using two and three of them and ending up with splits and cracks, none of that's going to work out for you. I'm trying to put one of these back together here. So, again, when you start making a cut here, up, and here, there, to bring this whole thing down by taking a bunch of wood off of it here. These corners are critical. You can see that the grain is running right there. If I extend past here, it's going to split right there. You don't want that. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is I've got a couple of red zones marked off here, there, and there. Um, that... 
this represents this bridge that has this open spot and they're springy like so to actually help the bridge stay on the top of the guitar and then we have this one which represents this here these are stress zones that work against the wood now let's say I come in here and cut this down it gets to a point where sometimes I end up getting rid of this whole thing so why buy this kind of bridge if you're going to do that but you're going to end up cutting this down some and inevitably what happens is these are curved you can tell both of these there's a curve there that's supposed to match the arch top um, I got too much going on here the other stuff is getting out of the way this one is a little bit more pronounced there's a curve that matches the top of the arch top there it is even with this one there's a little curve there so when you start cutting on these you're going to have to restore the curve on the arch top and I'm showing you the pressure zone so when everything comes together the strings are on everything is pushing down if this part does not match the curve of the arch top what ends up happening is you get pressure points and those pressure points will be transferred to the top of the arch top and it will cause running splits so when we look at this guitar I haven't mentioned uh, to you what's going on in here sometimes these guitars have bracings this way this one has a tone bar configuration like some of the big body K's you would see in the end of um, the 50s and going into the 60s there is a large piece of wood bracing that comes and follows the angle of the fretboard down in here you can take your finger and reach in and feel it the edge of it is right there I did an episode about putting pickups in one of these where you have to cut into those I think I'll give you a link right up there it ended up being one of Troy Murrah's guitars maybe the restaurant junk pile is what it was called but you see a, a, a split following that right there and there's a cleat right there and we've put a cleat on this crack here and here um, and there was a, a crack over here that we've put a cleat in but the moral of the story is when I put one of these bridges on here and of course this one is um, already too high and I line up everything when it comes time to string this up you can see that there's pressure here so this bridge is going to squat right in the middle watch right here you see that now if there are gaps when I put the bridge on here let's try this other bridge this one would take a lot a lot of work to take the wood off um, and this string isn't going to help me here at all but ignore the string and pay attention to this side now this one is already pretty good but if there is any gap or pressure uh, or gap or th these don't match up to the top of this arch top what happens is when strings come down wherever there is not contact it puts greater pressure where there is and then the next thing you know that pressure causes downward cracks so having a new top is one thing but having one that's had this glue you can see there's a few dips here and there where there has been cracks and things so we want to make sure that the bottom of this bridge actually matches this guitar not any other one let me show you a little trick okay there we go let's get this string out of the way this is not a trapeze per se it's it's attached to the back of the guitar with four screws you can see that there but um, this is 400 grit sandpaper it has an adhesive on the back I think I will give you a link in the resources section down below on where to buy a big roll of this fairly economically now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece of this and tape it down now this has adhesive I don't want to use the adhesive on here because uh, the tackiness of it is enough to pull this fine finish off here but we are going to tape a piece of this 400 grit sandpaper 
onto the top of the guitar. We're not going to use something that has a, a groove in it or something like that, but let me get this taped on here. And we know that we want this about in the middle of where our bridge is going to go. Okay, as always, Chick Flick Teal Scissors are best. In every case, we're going to take some of our low-tack tape here, like so, and we're going to find where the middle of that is, and we are simply going to tape this sandpaper, again without using the adhesive on the back, to the top of the guitar, like so. Make sure there's no creases, make sure it's riding the top of the guitar good, like so. And then we're going to take a couple of our fine cloths that we have here. Like this fine example with the cheery bird on it. And this other historic remnant. And we're just basically, after we get everything cut down, we are just going to put the bridge on top of the guitar of course we've done the bandsaw work and we are just going to draw the bridge back and forth when will you know that everything's okay well when you pick up the paper and you see that there is markings from the bridge everywhere if it's this kind of bridge um, that's one thing. If it's the springy type, of course, you'll have marks between here and here. But this is how you match this bridge to the top of the guitar. And when you see marks everywhere, you can tell already that there is a ton of work to do here to get rid of this here and this here over here. So if you need to, you can go trim this down on a bandsaw a little bit. But once you get marks everywhere, you will see that the bridge is perfectly fit. You want to make sure there are no gaps under there. Now, wise luthier Fred Wallachy told me, don't do this right here. <laughs> like so, use the full length of the sandpaper to do the work for you. Now, the dust that's coming off of there, you might want to collect that because you may need a paste that looks like rosewood someday. But this is kind of how you do it. Okay, a few last uh, minute tips here about bridges. I want to talk to you a little bit about a guitar you're familiar with, the Archcraft Junk Pile. Just put that up there and look at the bridge. I did a playlist about everything we've done with this guitar. It's right up there right about now. But this guitar, let's raise it up here, has a Bakelite bridge. It is not wood. It's plastic like those old Philco radio bodies and knobs and things like that. So, if you see one of these and it's less than $200, you are looking at a good deal. It already has slots in it for the strings. Now, I've, I've talked to you about um, arranging your projects. I don't think I have a card left, but I talked to you about getting these simple canvas bags with um, a, uh, the handles on them and identifying them, putting a clip on them. Because when you go to work on somebody's guitar, you want to take all the pieces, secure them, label them, put them in baggies, and then have a bag that has a clip on it with the name of the project. I'll tell you what, if I have a Bakelite bridge like this, and I give you my guitar to work with, and you lose this bridge, guess what? I'm not going to be happy even if you find one just like it. I want the original part. I want the original tailpiece, I want the original everything unless I make the decision to take take it off. So, hint number two about a Bakelite bridge, do not grind on it, do not uh, make modification to it, um, because 
again, if somebody values that, they are going to um, be upset that you did that. You can always go to the person and say, hey, I'm working on something over here. This bridge is too high, or I need to do something with it. I, I noticed that there's something wrong with it. So I'm going to take a bridge like this, and I'm going to make this I'm going to cut this one down. Oh, this gives you a good idea of what it would take to get this bridge down to this height. But anyway, you just tell the person, hey, you go ahead and keep this. Uh, I'm going to work this one down to get what I need, and you'll have the original part if you ever need it. Um, look, guys, never take this off of a guitar and keep it without offering the guy uh, or the person this back just don't do that that's just really unethical um, these guys that strip down these guitars for parts like that to sell us the other ones of us for two hundred dollars I guess if that's how they got to make their money it's kind of like ripping a really old book apart and selling the pictures out of or something anyway this bridge losing this bridge two hundred dollar bad deal bad reputation Put your stuff in a bag, label it, and you'll be really happy. So, that said, um, watch for historic stuff. Um, make sure that the bridge is sanded to the top of the guitar. Know your pressure points. Let me hold that up in case you need to do a screenshot of it know that they're likely to split here and here use a round file um, sand everything down a roll of this is really cheap you're going to find it um, very economical look for marks all the way across when it's starting to come in contact with a bridge uh, with a body that has you fit the bridge to the body that's the bottom line and watch the tackiness of the tape you're using so you don't pull finish off a fine guitar okay that's about it let's close this out alrighty then I hope I gave you a bunch to think about don't let these guitars scare you off but again if somebody brings you one like this and you're kind of got, gaining a reputation of being able to work on these junky old arch tops where the outcome isn't thousands and thousands of dollars at risk you've got to be able to tell people hey look what'd you pay for this um, I'm going to have to put this and this and this into it. Uh, that's a lot of hours, and I charge this much or do this. Um, and so they know <laughs> up front that they're going to have $600 into a $200 guitar. If it means that much to them, great. But be really clear about what you're doing. Another takeaway I, I, uh, I hope you picked up was that you don't want to lose parts. It's a best practice if you are going to change something on an old guitar give the person who is who you're doing the work for the opportunity to take the parts back and keep them with the guitar if they don't want them good put them in a collection i think you've learned in this episode stop at every old guitar store you see ask them do you have any bridges laying around you want to get rid of in a lot of so you're looking for um bridges for arch top guitar with the thumb wheel um face it there is or is not a lot of demand in guitar shops for people to bring in a hundred dollar guitar and try to make it worth 200 by spending 600 so always check uh, and keep your eyes open for old bridges because you will inevitably use them if you're going to work on junk like i do Okay, we're going to continue um, work on this guitar by dressing it up and putting a pickup on it. And we're getting fairly close. And if you haven't given me a like, do that and subscribe. You really want to know what happens at the end when this guitar is worth half as much as I put into it. I'll see you next time.